What's up everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and in this episode of Coding with the Force, we're gonna go over some important best practices to consider when you are doing iteration over collections in Apex. We'll find out what you should do, what you shouldn't do, and we will, of course, do some examples in Apex together. All right, everybody, welcome back to this Apex Masterclass tutorial series. Today, we are going to take a look at some things that you should avoid doing when you are iterating over collections or writing for loops in Apex. Um, I'm just going to go over a few of the more common things that you should avoid uh, that are easy to avoid if you just know to avoid them, right? Um, and uh, hopefully, it'll help you so that you don't ever have to run into them yourself. Uh, there are things that are going to um, push you over your, you know, um, Salesforce limits, or they are things that are going to really slow down your code's execution speed, right? So, um, yeah, let's just take a look at those. Uh, one thing I will say is I'm going to go over... Um, things that have to do with DML, database manip manipulation language is what DML stands for, um, or basically inserting, updating, deleting records. And I'm going to go over SQL a little bit in this. And I know we have yet to have uh, the videos that go over that, uh, those areas in more detail. Don't get too worried about them. Just, uh, I'm just showing you here because it is important to know what you can and can't do within collections regarding those two things. <clears throat> there will eventually be videos on those aspects of Salesforce or Apex as well, and you'll be able to, uh, um, you know, get way more context into them. So don't run away. Don't be freaked out. You'll be okay, I promise. All right, so the first thing that we're going to look at, uh, we have this class, that, or this uh, Apex class that we made in the last video where we have a, uh, you know, simple non-enhanced for loop and an enhanced for loop uh, that uh, we've built. And in this non-enhanced for loop, what I'm going to attempt to do is insert the uh, contact that I am currently operating on, right? So I'm going to, oops, it's contacts. I'm going to try to insert this contact record and um, what you'll find is if I'm just doing a couple of them, like we've been doing, right, then it's no big deal. But maybe if we have way more than that, it'll become a real big problem. So I've got my Apex Anonymous window uh, up over here, and I'm going to call that method with just two contacts and see what happens. Actually, I might not have saved this. So let me <laughs> let me actually save this first. That's important, right? Um, and then we'll run it again, and we'll see that it did work successfully, which is great. But what happens if I insert 500 contacts, right? What if I'm what if I'm going through a thousand contacts? What might happen then? Um, I've created this thing called the object creator over here to just help me create as many contacts as I want at any given time. And so I'm going to use that uh, to create a thousand contacts really quick and then pass that contact list into my method here to try to insert that many contacts in a, in a loop. So let's give that a shot. By the way, uh, this is a good example of when you'd want to use a non-enhanced for loop. You don't have a collection of things to put in your enhanced for loop. So instead, I'm just iterating as many times uh, for as many database entries or basically for as many contacts as I want to create, right? Um, all right, so over here in my Apex Anonymous window, actually, I don't want to get rid of all that. I want to say object creator. I'm not sure if I save this. I'm going to go ahead and save that object creator <clears throat> dot create contacts uh, taco bueno 
and uh, we want to make a thousand of them and uh, then we're gonna pass our contacts in to our method after we've created them and attempt to insert them one at a time which is what we're doing right now we're inserting them each one at a time every single loop uh, every single time we go through here uh, through this loop so we're essentially going to make a thousand insert statements let's see what happens it's gonna take a while obviously because we're creating a thousand contacts so uh, we'll give it a second and <clears throat> we got this too many DML statements uh, message that you can see right here. And I'll zoom in just to make it ultra super mega clear. Too many DML statements. And if we go look at what line that is, it is right here where we insert these contacts. And that is because in Salesforce, you can only do in a single transaction, which we'll talk more about what, what qualifies as a transaction later in this series. But um, in a single Apex transaction, you can only do 150 DML statements, inserts, updates, deletes, upserts, which are doesn't matter for now, or undeletes uh, in a single transaction for Apex. And obviously, because we are iterating over 1,000 records, we would be trying to do 1,000 of these in insert statements. And so you really want to avoid at all costs um, putting DML statements inside of your for loop because you're gonna eventually run into limits in all likelihood. Now the easy way to avoid this is instead, once you're done doing all the things that you wanna do or updating all your records, you can then say insert contacts like so outside of your for loop. So now you've done all of your work on your contacts list and uh, you want to insert them well that's fine that only counts as one DML statement right because you've you've got them all in this list and you can insert all of them in the list at the exact same time um, and if we save this <clears throat> and we run this again what we'll find is uh, that it'll run just fine and we can insert all 1000 contacts no problem at all. So, uh, <laughs> found a lot of duplicates. Uh, but other than that, <clears throat> everything seemed to run A-OK. -okay. No big deal. Now, now that we've gone over that, important to know, super important to know, I see this, uh, unfortunately, far too often, or I have in the past. Um, the other one that we need to go over is SQL queries right um, how do we you know if you're doing a SQL query within a for loop we'll just say you're you're making a mistake <laughs> and I'll show you why yet again right so say I was in my for loop and I really needed to find some more data um, to do whatever operation I wanted to do <clears throat> And I said, find all contacts with same last name or something. I don't know exactly why you do this. You'd say uh, from uh, contact where last name is equal to bamboozled. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so you want to query for that and find your contacts. Well, uh, just with just like with the DML statements, there are limits around SQL statements in an Apex transaction as well. And so if we did this and we tried to run it, um, what we're going to find is that, uh, well, I guess number one, we've got too many query rows. We've got over 5,000 query rows. Um, but if I limited this to, say, just one record and we ran it again, then... 
We might get another one, right? There we go. So if we uh, <clears throat> didn't have too many records, by the way, as we'll go over later, you can only have 50,000 records returned from one of these so-called queries or queries to gather data from your database. Um, but you can also only do 100 SQL queries in an Apex transaction. And by putting a SQL query within a for loop, you're essentially dooming yourself to almost certainly eventually hitting that limit. So you really want to make sure and, and do your best to avoid this um, whenever you can. And there are plenty of ways to avoid this <clears throat> because you could create a set of last names and uh, then create a map things that we don't necessarily need to go over right now we'll go over later um, in the series but there are other ways to figure out whether existing contacts um, have that same last name or something by the way last name is a terrible thing to match on I'm getting a little off topic but uh, there are other ways to do this exact same thing in a more efficient manner All right so do your best to avoid doing these SQL statements inside of for loops or you will run into limits uh, fast very 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 fast um, and the last thing that I just want to talk about briefly um, because I think it's important to know is that lots of people will get into situations where you need to iterate over one list like you need to iterate over one collection here, a list of contacts, and then you need to iterate over another list of something, right? So you have a for loop within a for loop. And I will say occasionally, but very, very rarely is this necessary. If you ever find yourself um, doing nested for loops, a for loop that has a for loop inside it, or maybe a for loop within a for loop within a for loop, you have probably made a mistake because this can exponentially increase your operation time. Uh, you can go from something that operated in a second to something that operates in 15 seconds because you've got a nested for loop. And this can easily be resolved with a map if you use maps which we went over as a collection type earlier and we'll see this done in later episodes but what i will say is you should aspire i suppose to avoid um inner for loops as much as you can like i said um it's not necessarily uh, always going to be the case, but uh, that that you're going to be able to avoid an inner for loop. But most of the time, I would say 90 plus percent of the time, it is. And the reason that I say that this is so important is because you only have in Apex 10 total seconds to do your entire Apex transaction. Um, and if you cannot finish in 10 seconds, then you will run into another limit, just like the ones we've been taking a look at, right? And often, uh, one of the biggest culprits of that are inner for loops, and they can be resolved by using maps and sets or whatever else, um, but more often than not maps to to improve your execution time and not need to actually use multiple for loops. Again, we'll go over that more in later episodes where we build some stuff together, but just know that you should try to avoid them as they will increase your operation time quite a bit and you will uh, be more and more prone, I guess I would say, to potentially hitting that 10 second um, apex operation time timeout. Um, yeah, okay, so there are other things that you should consider when you're writing for loops, other things that we will go over as the series progresses, but these are the three most common things I think that I see developers do, and the three most easily avoided things, if you think about them 
you know, in a different way, and you use different tools to not not do this, right? Uh, by the way, all of this stuff is bad in other languages too, but there's no limits to enforce them, right? Like in Salesforce. <laughs> um, all right, I think that's probably it for now. Uh, hopefully this helps you avoid some things that um, you really don't want to get yourself into and uh, makes it so that uh, your code operates a little faster, a little better, whatever else. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode and I look forward to hopefully seeing you in the next one. Thank you.